Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be looking at few mechanics cases. So this is problem number one. And in this question, we have been given a bobbin that rolls without slipping. So this thing is rolling without slipping. And its end, uh, this point over here that is attached by a string is actually being pulled with some velocity V. And we have a board, something like this, that is hinged at one end and leaned on top of the bobbin. As the bobbin moves forward, the board is going to come downwards. So as a result, this board is going to have some omega and essentially that's what we have to find okay so let's begin with the analysis okay guys so this is how the situation is looking like so so it's being said that this end of the bobbin is being pulled with a velocity of v now it's also given that it's rolling without slipping so this contact point o over here is going to be the is going to be the instantaneous axis of rotation for the bobbin if i call this point as one over here so i can easily write the velocity of one as let's assume the bobbin is rotating with an angular velocity of omega so v1 I can write as omega multiplied by the distance of point distance 1 o which is going to be capital R plus small r. So from here we get omega as v divided by capital R plus small r. Now our next point of interest is the contact point over here. Uh, let's call it as point 2. So we can write the velocity of the point 2 using the instantaneous axis of rotation. If we can figure out this distance. I'm going to join the center of the bobbin to point 2 and to point O. So I'm going to get rid of this center thing for a while. So if I zoom in into this triangle, uh, I'm going to call this angle as theta, similarly even this angle as theta. Now if I drop a line from the center, it's going to bisect the chord. From here, I can see that the distance 2O is simply 2R cos theta. So the velocity of point 2, which is the material point on the bobbin, is going to be perpendicular to, to the line O2 and its magnitude is going to be V2. And V2 is simply going to be the distance from the IAOR, which is 2R cos theta, multiplied by the omega, which is V divided by capital R plus small r. Now guys, I'm going to be using a bit of geometry. So this angle is 90 degree, right? So this angle is 90 minus theta. So this angle is going to be theta. So if I draw the material point 2 on the bobbin, the component of velocity that is perpendicular to the board is going to be V2 sin theta. Now let's say I draw the material point on the board with a red color. Now as they're moving together, the red point and the blue point shouldn't have any relative velocity components along the line joining them, which basically means even the red point should be moving in the in this direction with the same velocity of v2 sin theta. Let's call this distance as x. We can figure out x with geometry. So if I connect this line to the center, this angle is going to be alpha by 2. Uh, and I know this distance o dash 2 is simply r. So x from this right triangle, we can figure out it is going to be r cot of alpha by 2. Okay guys, so if you observe something, this angle is going to be uh, 90 minus alpha by 2, right? So this angle is alpha by 2. We can also say that theta is simply alpha by 2. Now by using the relative velocity equals 0 argument, we can say that v2 sin theta, which is nothing but 2r cos theta sin theta times v divided by capital R plus small r is simply equal to r cot alpha by 2 multiplied by the omega of the board. Let's call the omega of the board as omega dash. So I can also write this as r cot of alpha by 2 multiplied by omega dash. And after solving this, we obtain the angular velocity of the bobbin as 2v sine square alpha by 2 divided by capital R plus small r. So now let's move on to the next problem. Okay guys, so uh, I'm going to be solving this problem over here and you guys can do problem number two as homework. So this is the build your understanding problem number two from rotation. So the, this problem is exactly similar to the one that is above. So I'll solve the one above. Okay guys, so in this question we have a thread that is wound on a bobbin similar to the previous problem. The inner radius is R, outer radius is capital R and it is passed around a nail that is hammered into the wall. The thread is pulled at a constant velocity of V and we have to find the velocity V0 of the center of the bobbin at the instant when the thread forms an angle of alpha with the vertical, assuming that the bobbin rolls without slipping, okay? Okay guys, so this is the situation that is given to us. First of all, let's just assume some variables. So let's say the center is moving with a velocity of V0 and, the, and let's say the bobbin is rotating with an angular velocity of omega. And let's just call this material point over here uh, at which this string is tangent to the bobbin as point number one. So if I drop a perpendicular from the center to this particular point, this angle is going to be alpha. Okay. Okay. Guys, so the velocity of point number one, uh, I can write it pretty easily. So it'll have a component V0, which is the which is due to the translation of the bobbin and it will also have a component of uh, small r omega naught that is along the tangent and we know that this angle over here is alpha so this angle is 90 minus alpha so the component of velocity at the point 1 which is along the string uh, is v naught sine alpha minus r omega naught and this must be equal to v 
if you want to make sure that the length remains constant and omega naught i can erase it and write it as v naught divided by capital r as it is pure rolling so i can see that and from here we get the value of v naught as v divided by r sin alpha minus small r which is what they asked us to find so this is the answer to this problem okay now we can try out byu2 from pathfinder and you should be able to solve it so with that let's move on to the next problem okay guys so this is the third problem and in this question we have two identical weightless rods and they are hinged to each other and to the horizontal beam the rigidity of each rod is k naught so essentially what that means is uh, if you extend this rod by an amount of x the inner tensile strength is going to be k naught times x now the problem is that if we displace a point a vertically downwards by a small amount uh, by the action of certain force f then we have to find the then we have to define a rigidity k for the system of rods relative to the vertical displacement of the hinge essentially what they're saying is uh, if i have to replace this with one single rod uh, of effective rigidity as k effective let's say and i apply the same force at this point f then i should get the same displacement delta as it was in this particular case so that's the problem so let's try to figure that out okay so let's say this was the initial configuration and now i displaced uh, the point by a small amount of y i am exaggerating the diagram so now we have to figure out the inner tensile forces that are developing as a result of extending the rods. As this y over here is very small, we can use an approximation here. So if I drop a perpendicular from the red line to the blue line, then I can essentially say that this red line and this blue line are approximately of the same length. Again, guys, is an approximation. Uh, and it was given to us that this angle was alpha. This angle over here, also, we can approximately take it as alpha, even though it would have reduced by a bit. But that d alpha, we can neglect it. And hence as a result, this distance over here, which we can treat as the elongation in our rod, is going to be y cos alpha. Similarly, the elongation in the other rod is also y cos alpha. So if I um, draw this point over here, essentially the force that is trying to bring it back to equilibrium position is k naught times y cos alpha. And similarly, k naught y cos alpha over here. And so as these are two symmetrical vectors, the resultant uh, will be along the angle bisector. And these two angles are alpha. So the F restoring is simply K naught Y cos alpha times cos alpha and two times of it. So this is going to be two K naught cos square alpha times Y. Okay, so okay, so now if you want to replace this entire system with some with another rod of rigidity K equivalent, if you apply the same force F, if you want the same Y, then then in this case the F restoring is going to be K equivalent times Y. So now we can compare both of these and come to the conclusion that k equivalent required is simply 2k naught cos square alpha which would be our required answer okay guys so moving on to the last problem so in this case we have a wheel whose radius is 10 centimeter and it moves without slippage so it's essentially rolling without slipping along a horizontal surface and its velocity v naught is given as 2 meter per second uh, so we have to determine the maximum height h that can be reached by a splash of mud which is separated from the moving wheel okay uh, assume that friction with air can be neglected Okay, and they're asking about the maximum height from the horizontal surface okay, and G can be taken as 10 meter per second square. So let's deal with problem 16 first. Okay, so there'll be mud particles that are leaving the wheel at each particular point and they'll all follow parabolic trajectories. But we can kind of, you know, see from common sense that the mud particle that will be reaching the maximum height will be of some sort like this and it'll be and it's going to follow a parabolic trajectory and reach the maximum height some point over here okay guys so now let's consider the angular position of this mud particle as theta uh, by symmetry when this angle is theta and i can also say that this angle is theta okay so now the thing is what is the velocity of the mud particle so guys relative to the center of mass of the wheel um, this mud particle essentially detaches from the wheel with the velocity of omega r but the wheel itself is translating with a velocity of v naught so we also also have to vectorially add v naught so if the question was you know what is the ground frame velocity of this mud particle it'll be omega r and v naught vectorially added together but in this question we won't really require this v naught component and i'll dis discuss why in a bit so anyway so uh, firstly we have to calculate the maximum height right so that will only depend on the v y of the mud particle so we know that the relative velocity is omega r which is also equal to v naught due to rolling condition which is 2 meter per second so the vertical component of this is going to be v naught sine theta so we can also we can easily say that the maximum height of this projectile h max is v y squared divided by 2g okay this height over here is simply r cos theta and the height from the ground is simply r so if you if you want the height of the max height reach of the mud particle as a function of theta it is going to be r1 plus cos theta 
we know sin theta squared divided by 2g so now it is depending on theta clearly so now as we want the maximum of this function we'll simply differentiate it so uh, angle theta is clearly not zero so we can cancel these out and from here cos theta comes out to be rg by 4 v naught squared which after solving comes out to be 1 by 4 and if you substitute it into the height expression you'll get the maximum height as 31.25 centimeters okay so in the second problem uh, is also pretty similar in that it's it's given that the splash of mud just graces the moving wheel again when it is traveling downward. So in the so in the wheel's frame of reference, you know, after this guy has left, it comes back and, you know, graces it again. And by symmetry, we can say that they will grace at the same angular position of theta. Because if it goes with the velocity of v0, then it can only be tangential at a velocity of v0 again. And in projectile motion, we know that this happens at equal horizontal level, right? If I project with the velocity of v0, it will again be v naught only at the other point which is at the same horizontal level and this we can also see by energy conservation this question we anyway have to solve in the reference frame of the wheel okay so the particle leaves and comes back something like this the angular positions are theta respectively relative to the wheel we figured it out it left it leaves with the velocity of v naught we know that the range of a projectile motion is v naught square sine 2 theta divided by g and this must be equal to now because of constraints the range is fixed right it we can see that it is going to be 2r sine theta and from here also surprisingly we get the answer as rg by v naught squared so which is 1 by 4 itself which means the height actually is the same going to be 31.25 centimeters that was it for this video guys if you enjoy the session please do like share and subscribe and that's it thanks for watching